It's your man Kill. We back for another Epp of Marriage Exposed. It's been a minute, had a hiatus, but you know, things in the game happen, so. Yeah, I really wanted to reach out to you guys and really thank you for your um, condolences and your support um, in the loss of my father. You guys were really, 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 really good to me, so I thank you for the text. I thank you for the emails. I thank you for the calls. I thank you for Facebook, Twitter, all of that. Um, in your efforts to reach out to me. I really appreciate that. And my mommy's doing well. She's actually here in, in the DC area with me now. She's been with me for a couple of weeks. And so we're trying to get used to a new normal. Um, it's gonna take some time, but I just really wanted to thank the Marriage Exposed family because they were really good to me. All right. Really, really good. So we back in effect. We got a question on tap for us right here. It's a long one, you know, but it's a good one. It's a good question. Um, we'll probably have to do two you know, yeah. depths for this because yeah. this is kind of in depth. But I've been married for four years to my husband. We were high school sweethearts and he was my first. But when we went to different colleges, we broke up. We got back together a couple of years after graduation, started dating again. And before you knew it, everything seemed like high school again. After dating for a year, he proposed and we got married. But after about the first six months, things just became so intense. There wasn't any fun anymore, no spontaneity. It was just becoming this boring world that started to drive me crazy. In year two of our marriage, I cheated on my husband with a guy I used to date in college and I felt so guilty for it. I told my husband and he was hurt, but he didn't want us to break up, which to be honest, kind of frustrated me because sometimes I think marriage and being committed being committed isn't for me. But I wanted to try and stay to work on a marriage and he said he would make things fun again. So I stayed, but just six months ago, I started having an affair with one of my coworkers. I haven't told my husband about this because I believe that I have the problem. In the past, I tried to blame everything on him, but looking back, I realized it wasn't the not having fun part that made me cheat the first time. It was the fact that I don't think I want to have a monogamous relationship. My problem is not only how do I tell my husband about this new affair, tell him I want a divorce and break his heart, but what's wrong with me? All my girlfriends say that they envy what my husband and I have, and my single girlfriends all want to be married and want to settle down, so why don't I want that? I just don't understand how society wants you to be with one person forever. To me, that's like saying you can only have one friend, only one have one person to go shoe shopping with or to hang out with or go on vacation with, to do different things with. So why does society tell us we can only be with one person? Dr. Ross, from a clinical standpoint, do you think there's something wrong with me? Well, use that PhD, <laughs> get busy. This is, this is interesting because you really don't hear um, females coming from this perspective. So to hear a woman say that she doesn't want to be in a monogamous relationship would make her feel like there's something wrong with me because most women, they want someone loyal, they want to be loyal, they right. want to have a true relationship. I really can't, um, actually I'd have to do a little bit more in depth in terms of finding out a little bit of information about her parents, what did she see growing up, were people often cheating in the relationships where the parents still together, was it forgiven? Uh, it, she raised in a swinging environment right. you know there are a couple of things that um, you know would have to be assessed before I could just give a all out answer but what I will say is this is that um, it's okay to realize that marriage may not be for you right. albeit um, it seems that they got married pretty young like right after college yeah. so I'm going to say 23, 24 you don't know you know, you're still trying to figure out who you are. Right. Um, basically. So, um, in in a sense, it's a little selfish because they should have done the work first. Okay. Before they got married. Now, what's the work? Well, figuring out what you want. But, of course, once she got into marriage, I guess she realized, you know, I don't want to be monogamous. I want to see other people. Right. Maybe he's not fulfilling. Maybe he's not the person that... Um, she thought that he should be or who he was because sometimes um, you know we plan our weddings and we don't plan our marriage right. and sometimes we get caught in situations of having this idea or this ideology that something <clears throat> excuse me should be a certain way and then when it does not turn out to be that happily ever after then there comes this conflict that we have to deal with okay. who am I um, you know, we go through emotional conflict. 
Do I love this person? If I love this person, why am I hurting this person? So really her cheating is not fair to her husband. Right. Um, for him to stay, he seems to be a pretty stand up kind of guy. For him to get through the first affair, we hope, or maybe, or, or he, he could be doing his own thing. You know, we just, never know. Or he just the type of dude who could forgive. You know, yeah, that's what I'm there, saying. Yeah, you know. he might have a very forgiving heart, um, but I think it's very unfair that she made that very first affair about him. But I do want to acknowledge that now she's taking the onus on herself and realizing that it's not him. Okay, and that maybe it's a character. I don't want to say a character defect or a character flaw, but. Um, a character okay for her to cheat. <clears throat> Let me explain. I, I'm glad you saw my face because <laughs> I'm. Sometimes, depending on what we've seen growing up, or depending what, on what we've been around, some things are okay. Okay. Like I, I've worked with clients where they smoke weed with their parents, or they drink with their parents. So for them, it's okay when they have a baby. Okay. You know, they'll put a little beer in the bottle to make the baby go to sleep. So to them, it's normal. It seems okay. To an outside person looking in, it's like, oh my God. Right. You're introducing your child to substance abuse, basically. Right. Um, or substances. Let me say that. Substances. So sometimes there are things that look like, that may look like a character flaw, which may be a character norm in someone's environment. So because of that, people do all kinds of things, which is why I say you have to get to know who you are marrying. You have to know the environment that they were raised in. You gotta have these conversations beforehand about what's acceptable, what's not acceptable, or be observant. Right. That's the thing. And a lot of times we go in, you know, with our eyes closed because we're so in love. And then you get a marriage and you realize it takes a little bit more than love to make a marriage work. If you didn't know that newsflash, it takes more than love. <laughs> right, right, Q? Wouldn't you agree? Concur. It takes, it, I mean, it just, it, it does because you're merging two lives together. So because of that, um, you've got to know how to compromise. And then there just may be some things that, you know, you just can't compromise. Like I can never be willing to compromise on somebody putting beer in my baby's bottle to put them to sleep. Right. I'm going to report you. I mean, I, I'm just not, right. you know, it's just, it, I was raised in a dry house, so where no alcohol was ever present. Wrong Georgia. <laughs> right back at so, it. So. That's what y'all call a dry house. Yeah. So if, if your parents were drunk, you would call it a wet house? Basically. I have no idea. <laughs> Down south. Okay. So because of that, I was never introduced to alcohol. So alcohol is not a temptation for me. I don't even drink now. It's not a temptation. Um, but for others, you know, that may be a reality. Right. And so you have to weigh out how you're going to make this compromise. Because when I see someone having like two drinks, I'm like, oh, you know, for me, because I'm like two is one is like, OK, two is like, oh, you know, it. I have a clutch my pearls kind of moment. Um, and, and I realize that's my thing because I don't drink. So right. I, I've had to learn how to compromise when yeah, I'm yeah. out with friends and they're, they're having bottle, you know, just right. getting it in. I have, I've had to learn how to compromise and not be judgmental. Right. Um, but let me ask you this. Okay. Do you think that there is something wrong with her? Well, it, it And, then, and it when depends. we look at the word wrong, it's like you're off balance, you're off kilter. Just because she doesn't want to be in a monogamous relationship, is there something wrong with uh, somebody like that? I, no, I, I absolutely don't think that there is something wrong with her. I just think that she now has an understanding. She tried it. It didn't work for her. She now has an understanding that at this point in her life, marriage is not for her. She right. wants to experiment. She wants to have different experiences. Right. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And, and, and if you think about it, um, in terms of in terms of women, we don't really get to experiment like you guys do. Well, some do. Oh, but, y'all do. Don't get twisted. But, but most to, women don't. I went to Morgan State. People, chicks got it in. <laughs> don't get it twisted. Oh, okay. I know you was raised in a dry house, yeah. but they was getting around that fist. Don't get it twisted. Well, yeah, yeah. That's what people you get know, it so in. You know, so y'all experiment. Don't get it but, twisted. 
But they couldn't be really open with it as to where you I where mean, guys yeah, are like yeah, celebrated, yeah, yeah. women are not. Or whatever, yeah, it's on the low. So you don't so you don't get really get that chance to like experience that moment. And um, you know, so maybe with these affairs, maybe it was maybe she's confused by the idea because affairs are exciting. Okay. Because they shouldn't happen. Alright, well cool. Well, that's part one. So there's nothing wrong with you. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good thing, you know, because I heard that concern. So it's not wrong with you. We're going to come back with part two, which a little kind of deals with, because what I loved about the question was just the whole piece of why the society, you yeah. know, where does that come from? Good everything like that. So we're going to be back. I'm your man, Kill. I'm Dr. Rise. Marriage Exposed. Let's keep it locked. Mm-hmm.